Hey, good morning, VC. By popular demand, Beetle Bootlegs Part 2 plus the solo years. And um, let me see here. Let's see. Let's start with a little uh, our friend John. Um, all of a sudden, I'm getting these Beetle freaks following me on the VC, which is great. You're all welcome because I'm one of them. But um, I know I don't primarily just do Beetle stuff here, but the uh, Beetle bootleg got you all out of the woodwork, and thanks for subscribing. All right, anyway, let's go into the record room, and I'm going to finish off um, the s some I realized that I didn't include yesterday on my last video, and uh, some solo things. So... I got them all in an array on the floor. Now, a couple of things. Beetle Freaks, and I'm one of them. You're all weird. Like Star Trekkies, right? And remember, remember in that episode in Saturday Night Live when William Shatner was at that Star Trek convention on that uh, sketch? Hey, you, 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 get a life! I kid, I kid. Um, Look at this, I got this room, I got all these books. In fact, I'd love to show you all sometimes. In fact, just briefly here, I think now this is gonna, I can tell it's gonna be longer than ever. I have all, these are all Beetle books. Some of you have seen them before. These are all Beetle books. I'm obsessed with these. Uh, that's a big part of my collection. And then as you know, I wrote one, The Beatles England. But um, anyway, so somewhere here I have books on, you know, so many books on uh, bootlegs and beetle collecting, and they're kind of here and then another section over there. But um, that maybe at some point, maybe I'll do an in-depth thing of that. But that's something I have to take my time and really jump into. Um, but just to start out, a little shout outs and a couple little things. As you know, I went to the uh, C. Paul McCartney in Vancouver, British Columbia, a week and a half ago. Uh, great show. I, I figured out I'd seen him about 18 times. Well, I had these VIP tickets, and unfortunately, one of my buddies from the Bay Area couldn't make it. And then someone locally was going to come with me. But she ended up not being able to come because her passport wasn't valid. So you have to have a passport or a, um enhanced driver's license to go to Canada, and especially with all what's going out with immigration now. Oh, I can't talk politics here, it pisses people off. Anyway, um, but being a VIP member, they sent me, a, of, of these tickets, I got two sets of these uh, little kind of gifts that showed up when I got back from that Vancouver thing. And there's some, you know, I, I'll, I'll keep them in a bag, the main thing. They're kind of fun, they're a little silly. Uh, I have no idea what to do with them or where to put them. But uh, since I got two sets, I ended up sending one to Melinda Murphy because she's, I think her Paul McCartney is her number one um, uh, artist in a lot of ways, especially Band on the Run. And I know she went and her husband went to see uh, the show earlier this year too. So uh, I sent her the second pack, but let me just show you. There's like uh, all these little, uh, Little things like a uh, VIP, freshen up McCartney, won't get me anywhere, won't get me backstage. Um, and another one, like a commemorative ticket only. Commer commemorative is the key word here. Um, and then another little tchotchke, what the hell is this? Uh, oh, like a luggage tag out of plastic, like a record luggage tag. But then, Hey, when you're going camping, not camping, when you're sitting out on the lawn at an outdoor fest, there's a Paul McCartney throw blanket, or it's a cart. Maybe it doesn't say McCartney, maybe it just says cart. I'm not gonna open it up. And keep away from, uh, from younger children. Keep this plastic away, please. Uh, but my younger son, my son's grown up, so I don't have to worry about that now. And then a freshen up Paul McCartney tote bag. So, you know, I just, I think pass it forward, move it on, share it with people, you know. I'm not going to sell it on eBay. I'm not going to, you know. I, I, I. Anyway, 
she was the first person I thought about because she's in that collector thing beyond the records. And I appreciate that. And I love when someone loves something so much. So having said that, I'm going to go really fast here of uh, these beetle things. And again, I got a few comments last time where people were talking about, well, that Vancouver show really was this show and it wasn't that show. I don't know. Maybe I don't even care. <laughs> As I said, I have uh, everything digitally. In the background, I'm paying a, a Mind Games expanded uh, Lennon bootleg. You can hear it a little bit here and there. Um, not that I don't care, but I just don't have that mind for, you know, there's two seconds more on this track in the fade out, like reading the friggin' Hoffman form on some remaster that there's a cough and a snip and a this and a, and you know, his guitar string was one quarter octave higher out of tune than on this version pressed by EMI Italy or whatever. Anyway, I digress, don't I? That's a rant. But I love you still, and I love all the new uh, subscribers. And you Beatle people, I love you, because I'm one of you, maybe. Uh, 50 years of bootleg collecting, 1969. So, in a way, this is another 50th anniversary. 50 years of bootlegs. The Dylan Great White Wonder bootleg and Let It Be kind of 6970 that started it all in the music bell. Now, I'm only going to show this one because this is not this is not what I showed the other day. This is actually a CD set. And this is called 30 Days with Don't Let Me Down and 187 other songs. Again, with all the sync tones, this is as complete as I know, and I'm sure someone knows there's probably even more um, of all the let it be get back recordings. And I know uh, a lot of you, have, I've got a couple of little inboxes mentioning that they're really into this and looking forward to next year's 50th Let It Be uh, film, expanded box, whatever. Of course, it won't be this much. Um, but look at this. Look how crazy these bootlegs were. Um, I have the bootlegs in another section right now. Let's see, are they here? But look at all these. They're all double discs and the actual album and obviously I, I don't need to go through all those pictures but then there's this beautiful booklet we're talking bootlegs baby bootlegs you know so people always want to make sure the real bootleg is as good as the bootleg bootleg anyway it goes into every track and oh my god it's massive you know, sometimes it's just them talking, and sometimes, really, it's not very good. But it's really fun to hear, like, fly on the wall stuff. What I love about these, I have them on my uh, hard drive. I'll, every once in a while, I'll put them on random and let them play and just see what comes up. And it's fun. Anyway, the end of a, a band. So, I'll just go through. First, I'm going to finish up with some Beatle things. And these Beatle bootlegs are when they started doing greater covers like I started sh teasing you in the last video about uh, better cover art instead of just the plain white wrappers with the uh, ink stamp so without further ado and not a lot of comments ultra rare tracks ultra rare tracks And then um, the Beatles at the Beeb. Now, the Beatles at the Beeb, I think I have 13 volumes of these. So I'm just gonna go through these really fast. Bootlegs. Sort of parodies and other covers. Actually, that's a parody of uh, a George Harrison solo album, uh, his orchestra, George Harrison, I'm sorry, George Martin cover. Number seven, number, which, which one's the Beatles at the Beeb? Number six. I don't even know when I got these. 
I don't remember over the years. I just used to get them. Whenever I'd see them, I'd have to get them all. Use record stores, record stores. Sometimes they were in import sections, obviously, because they're bootlegs. And then Beatles Session, this is more of a famous one, which has a lot of uh, the rare things. Again, the anthologies in a way made these obsolete, but not really for collectors, right? But any of you Beatle, Beatle freaks that even know beyond all the details and remember the details. Um, next week I have one of my buddies who I did the uh, Beatles England book with David Bacon visiting and he's coming through here. He's from New Jersey, but he's coming through on the way back from Hawaii. So if we get a chance to talk this stuff, um, maybe we will. Okay, let's see what else we got. Okay, these actually, okay, these other ones aren't bootlegs, they're just uh, rare things. So, okay, moving on. Uh, I'm gonna go from little to big. So, the solo, solo bootlegs. Ringo, I'm sorry, I don't have much Ringo. <laughs> Down and out, look at that picture. I have two Ringo bootlegs. Um, the long version of Six O'Clock with Paul McCartney, uh, which, which the original was on the single. I think the long version was on the cassette, as I recall. Again, someone is gonna rip me apart if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that was the case. The, the cassette had, and I have that somewhere, the cassette of the Ringo album produced by uh, Richard Perry had the longer version, and it wasn't on the LP. Anyway, so you get that. And here we go. Ringo, Richie and his pals, and Scouse the Mouse. Now, do you know something about this cover? Do you notice something? I don't know if it shows up on the video here. I'll show you. I look like an idiot, don't I? Don't answer that. Oh my God! Ringo, 3D, Caveman, Barbara Bach, Dennis Quaid. Oh my God, Scouse the Mouse. <laughs> Ringo, I think this, was, this came out when Ringo was doing drugs and drinking. He's, he's been sober for 30 years now, good for him. Um, Let's see, can I do this for you guys? Are you tripping? Are you tripping? Let's see you tripping, man. Ringo, Ringo Starr, okay. Bootleg, all right, that's Ringo. I only have a few from George. Again, I didn't pick up for some reason, maybe I didn't see him, I don't even remember. Whenever I'd see a boot, I'd pick it up, but I really didn't seek out uh, bootlegs, like go out, you know, scour the, uh, record stores and online places uh, for bootlegs. After a while, I just kind of lost interest in picking up all the boots because I have so many. I have so much on digital. Again, my friend David sends me these files and I hate to admit this, I think I have files and files and files of bootleg stuff that I haven't even really sat down and listened to. How lame is that? I got so much great music, so, you know. Okay, George Harrison by George. This has Miss Odell, Deep, Burl, Deep Blue, I Don't Care Anymore, Pirate Song. Basically, this has a lot of the B-sides and rare singles. Um, handmade Records. This is actually something that, you know, they should put out. The Harrison Estate, I tell you, if any of the Beatles need some criticism, Olivia and Danny, if you're listening, you know, you put out that uh, LP with that Scorsese documentary. What is it? Rarities, Oddities, George Harrison, Volume 1. Where the fuck is Volume 2, 3, 4, 10, 15? We need a Harrison Rarities box set. Even with the, uh, the Beatle vinyl, the Harrison vinyl box, no outtakes, no alternates. We need that. Come on, we're not getting any younger. 
Either are you. Well, anyway. George Harrison live in Vancouver, which is kind of ironic since I was just there. This is the 74 tour where he had the Dark Horse uh, voice. H-O-A-R-S-E voice. I don't blame him for never putting a live album out for this because his voice, I saw um, two of these shows. It was great seeing a Beatle, but come on. I mean, that was the first Beatle I saw after their breakup in person, live. It was great, but he was like, dark horse running on a dark race horse. Okay, and then um, The Greatest Show on Earth. And this is basically um, from the Bangladesh. And it was closed out at $3.25, this copy. Um, these are, I think, some of the rehearsals or the afternoon show or something. I don't remember all the details here. Again, someone here is going to tell me what this is because I don't remember and I don't really care. So this is not as informative as you want it to be. This is more of a show, visual showcase of my Beetle bootleg collection and now the solo years. Okay, let's go with Maca again. Wings in Copenhagen, in concert. Gate, beautiful gatefold, Paul McCartney and Wings in a Snowstorm picture. Uh, live in Sweden, 76, at the Falconer Theater, Denmark. You know, just blank, blank, blank. I'm not gonna show you the disc, they're just blank. Gotta dance, gotta sing, gotta dance, studio tracks. Wings Live, 1972. Oh, you'll love this one. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, oh, here we go, here we go. There's something in there. National Features Presents, special radio program. Oh, this might be... I wonder if this is a bootleg. This is basically one of those interview things uh, with Paul and Linda about promotion for uh, Band on the Run. This is a copy of it, probably. This is basically when um, the announcer will read the question. Well, how did you arrange to play in each place, Paul? And then Paul answers, open cue. No admission charge? So this is talking about when Paul was uh, and Wings first started, and they were kind of going around England, showing up at universities in the UK and Europe, and just showing up and playing. That would have been the place to see them, right? Um, anyway, this might even be a boot of that uh, record that was sent out to uh, radio stations back in the day. <laughs> the Melvin Bragg interview. I guess Melvin Bragg was a DJ. Someone's going to tell me here. I have no idea who Melvin Bragg is. So either this is a interview by Melvin Bragg with Paul McCartney or it's an interview with Melvin Bragg and I have no idea who Melvin Bragg is but someone in the audience knows Paul McCartney and Wings live cost me three dollars and 49 cents uh, rock show jet uh, oh, this is recorded live at Maple Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto May 1976 Wings Over America tour. But you want to see something really cool that I got when I worked? I worked in record stores, when, as you know this, because Maslow won't shut up about telling you at, that you worked in record stores throughout the 70s. But if I can find it, of course, I can't find it now. Bum, bum, bum. Well, maybe I showed it before. Anyway, um, Maslov has a uh, Wings Over America belt buckle that Capitol Records gave to me. Okay, laser beams. There was so many laser beams in the Wings Over America, sh America show. And of course, those of you who have seen McCartney in the last 20, 25, well, 40 years, you know every time he does... Live and Let Die, he does lasers and explosions. He started that in 76. Ain't nothing new. So all of a sudden, that explosion when the 
fireworks happen when he says, live and let die. That started in, during the Wings Over America tour, 1976. This is live at the Forum. I went to one of the Forum shows. I saw two Cal, Cal Palace shows in the Bay Area, and I saw the forum, one of the Forum shows in Los Angeles in 76. World Tour, North Carolina. North Carolina, there you go, boys. Um, be, Wings Over America, North Carolina. Wonderland 380, North Carolina, USA. Now this says a 1975 World Tour, but that's a mistake. Bootleg's making a mistake here. This one actually has sort of a label. McCartley Scotland 73 with one of their generic backs. And that's my handwriting. How legible is that for a, um, of course by then, 73, I was 19 year old. And then live at University 1972, oh, at Hull. McCartney and Wings at Hull, 1972 during that tour. Old Glory Records. So, that's it of McCartney. We're going to end up the Beatle bootleg part two, Mazzy extravaganza with John Lennon. John Lennon archives. Now this is where, these are pretty elaborate, pretty nice packaging. Again, a mix of things, so I'm not going to say what's on everyone. Um, this has really an overview. Archives Volume 1. Archives Volume 2. Luck of the Irish, Every Man Has a Woman. He said, she said, grow old with me. Archives Number 3. Archives Number 4. Okay, then John Lennon Telecast. These are live uh, shows he did on TV. John Sinclair, It's So Hard. This is from the Dick Cavett Show, the Mike Douglas Show, and the David Frost Show in the early 70s. A lot of this during the uh, period when he was trying to get his green card, when he was getting deported, unfortunately. Um... Whole page book, limited edition. It's one of the uh, last, that's the Annie Leibovitz photograph the day he died. Um, kind of a nice overview, little booklet. You know, again, some of these uh, companies, these booters, did some really cool things. Um, this is an early version of that same telecast that he did on those shows, Dick Cavett, David Frost. Um, again, me writing, my handwriting. As I showed you in the original video, trademark equality. That was the original, pretty much the original bootleg uh, company. I love these stickers. I love just these covers with the rubber stamp. Right? Okay. Je suis le premier. Uh, so this is Boogaloo at 32, version 2, Boogaloo at 32. This is probably um, when he was working on the Ringo solo album, the demos, John Lennon on that. Men Love. Avenue where that's the house he grew up with his Aunt Mimi. Um, there you go. On that, John Lennon, the one in one concert, New York. John Lennon, X M B E, <laughs> Angel Baby. This is a lot of the, um, this goes back to the rock and roll sessions, and that's a whole story that you've probably heard other people talk about. I won't get into it. 
where he, um, since John Lennon basically uh, stole or borrowed the line, here come old flat top, he come grooving up slowly. That was on, as you know, on Come Together. That's from a Chuck Berry song. So the publisher, there was an agreement that he was going to do some songs and trade. There was a settlement and yada, 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 as they say. You can find that story somewhere else. I'm the greatest, you're blues, serve yourself. An EP, bootleg EP. Black is beautiful, let's see what this is. Ah, Dr. Winston O'Boogie on The Tomorrow Show. Tomorrow Show is a late night TV show. John Lennon was interviewed by, uh, um, you know his name, Snyder, Tom Snyder. So that's an interview boot what is this aren't you excited when I just sit here open John Lennon Rolling Stones oh this must be a British Blues Jam this is actually what I use as a lobster bib when I go to um, Outback Steakhouse mates Dead sit, stick and langostino. I can't do it. Don't ask Mazzy to do accents. Oh, or this can be a toilet seat cover. How's that? <laughs> I haven't had my coffee yet, believe me. I got up this morning just knowing I had to do volume two here, so bear with me. Hey, you're entertained, aren't you? You can't be too serious with this shit. Okay, um, Ying Yang. I don't remember what this is. Serve Yourself from 80, and then it has Mucho Mungo from 74, Stand By Me, Your Blues. Imagine another comp is a young, is that Kyoto? That's, or is that, um, I guess Yoko's daughter. It looks like Yoko. I was gonna say it is Yoko, but it looks more like, that's Yoko. Anyway. Okay, John Lennon, the May Pang tapes. You know about May Pang. Mei Pang is, um, uh, was Yoko's assistant, John Yoko's assistant, and uh, Yoko sent Mei with John to L.A. for his lost weekend year in L.A. She put together this book a number of years ago, Polaroid, she took of uh, John Lennon. So, he did, he did walls and bridges um, during that time in L.A., or w with... Um, yeah. So, well, this is basically, oh, these are the songs from the rock and roll sessions with Phil Spector. And that, as we know, was a shit show. You know, that didn't come out like it should have come out. Okay, I'm gonna go quickly through these, just the covers. This is, this is uh, 14 volumes of the John Lennon tape. And that box set, the John Lennon uh, CD box set of Rarities Anthology, the big cube ish is a lot of this stuff not everything but that's worth getting um, if you can still find it you know anyway one two three four picture from how I won the war he filmed in Spain in 1966 Five, six, in a Leibowitz shot, seven, eight, nine, Richard Abaddon, photograph, number nine, number nine. Number 10. Number 11. 12. 12. I should leave that one up forever. Anyway. No political statements, Mazzy. That's not politics, that's human 
dignity, peace, world peace. Okay. There's a warning here if you look at my intro page that sometimes I say things, this is my channel. You're coming to me. I'm not on the forum posting that shit. It's not shit, but anyway. Thirteen and number fourteen. Gibraltar. Well, they got married. Gibraltar. Anyway, um, Mazzy's bootlegs, Beetle bootlegs, emphasizing the solo years. Part two. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to all you beetle, uh, new beetle people, beetle peoples that are coming and subscribing. You're welcome here. I don't always do beetle stuff, but I have a massive collection. So every once in a while, I'll throw that in. And um, sometimes I do jazz shit. Sometimes I do punk crap. Sometimes I do um, middle of the road and bluesy stuff. I kind of do a little of everything, almost. But anyway, Mazzy loves you. Thanks for watching and uh, subscribe if you haven't and uh, comment. Tell me some of your favorite bootlegs um, or how, or tell me anything. Mix, mix shit up. Take care. Mazzy loves you. Bye.